Welcome to Your Vertical Hope. Hi, y'all. Welcome to the Vertical Hope Show. I'm your host, Michelle Davenport. Today, we're going to start in Matthew 28, 16 through 18. And I have some encouragement for you today, some vertical hope that is going to get you motivated like you've never been motivated before. Let's get into this word. Uh, Matthew 28, 16. The 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When, he, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Keep that word in mind, doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. There you have it. He says, go. He says, listen, Jesus gives them this great commission. But as we're reading right there, 28, 16, that's what we're gonna be talking today. We're gonna to be talking that God knows when you doubt. He knows when you doubt. Don't downplay doubt and you're doubting what God has called you to do. Ask him for confirmation. Ask him for confirmation because right here it said, the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Jesus himself, listen, these are his disciples. They've been walking with him for three years. They've been seeing the miracles. They've been witnessing everything that Jesus can do and the power that he holds. And he tells them to go. And he said, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but they doubted. Now listen, they worshiped him and they doubted. Doesn't sound like it can be in the same sentence, y'all, but it is. It says they worshiped him, but some doubted. Some of them were worshiping and weren't doubting, and some of them were worshiping and doubting. Have you ever doubted God? Have you ever doubted the Word of God in your life? Listen, Jesus didn't say, once you're absolutely, positively sure, then go. He looks at these worshipers. He looks at their heart, and he says, listen, you go. You go, you go ahead and go, doubters. You go, and you go tell the world the good news. So many of us stop or stop straight in our tracks because we doubt our ability. And that's okay. You can doubt, you can doubt your ability because I don't want you to have trust in what you can do. What I want to implore you to do today is have trust in what God can do through you. Amen? What he can do through you. Obviously, doubters are welcome. <laughs> They're welcome in the Bible of God. There's so many doubters. Abraham, I mean, Elijah. There were so many doubter, doubters in the uh, Bible. Gideon. There, uh, God does not want us to pretend. He doesn't want us to go, yeah, you know, yeah, you're calling me to do this. Yeah, no problem. And then you're doubting in your heart that you that you can do it or that worse, that God can do it through you. He doesn't want you to pretend like you're not doubting. He just wants you to know, listen, if I'm calling you to do something, I'm going to equip you to do it. And so you're either doubting one or two things. You're doubting your ability, which I've already said, hey, it's totally cool that you doubt your ability to do something because listen, I don't want my confidence to be in me. I don't want, I don't want that. One, that's an easy way to get all puffed up if you think you're pulling this all off. Two, my confidence should be in God, the one that calling me because listen, the things that God has called me to do so far in my life have been so far beyond what I thought I could do. There's no way that I could ever look at the situation or look at what he's calling me to do and say, oh yeah, I can do that. Because almost 100% of the things that he's called me to do, if not 100%, I knew when he called me, there's no way I could do it without his help. I knew that if he didn't equip me and if he didn't prepare the way for me and if he didn't speak to other people's hearts and put me on their mind and put the vision on their mind, there's no way any of it could come to pass. And I'm totally okay with that. I don't want me to ever think that I can do something in my own ability. I want my faith and my confidence to be put in God and not me. Amen? Because I don't know about you, but people can get awful puffed up really quick if they think they're pulling something off that is so big. Like, I've always said, if you're not dreaming big, big, uh, big enough where you don't need God to intervene for that dream to kind of pass, then you're not dreaming big enough. Amen? Amen. Uh, in Judges, let's go to, let's flip over. That was in Matthew. So, let's flip over to Judges. 
in Judges 6, 36 through 40, Gideon is asking God for not just one sign, because God's calling him. God's calling Gideon out. And he's not asking him for just one sign that God is calling him to save Israel, but two signs. He's saying, you know, one sign's good, but I think I want two. Some of you have read this before. You find fault with Gideon. For those of you have, who have found fault, you must realize the circumstances Gideon is faced with. He's not a warrior in the traditional sense. He had no military training, none to speak of. He knew God had, had called him, but now is the time to actually act on the call. Now listen, I don't know about you, but so often when God calls you to do something that seems almost nearly impossible, right when he calls you to do it, and he's giving you a, a semi-plan, a first step to take. It's okay when you see that. Like oftentimes, somebody will ask me to come speak or like I, I co-hosted with the God's View, beautiful group of women, just love them all. Um, you know, but I, I was asked like six or seven months before it was ever time for me to do it. And so I was like, oh yeah, absolutely, I'll do it. Oh, I was so excited and told my husband and, and I just knew God wanted me to go to be with this group of women and I was gonna share my testimony for the first three months. I mean, for first, <laughs> the first three episodes and then I was gonna co-host the other, I think, 10, nine or 10. Um, and I was so excited, but the closer it got for me to do it, I tell you what, I, I was getting a little bit nervous because I had never co had I mean, I had my own show, which is different. I mean, you look at the camera a lot and you speak to you, but co-hosting, you're with other women, so you need to look at them and, and not just look at the camera. And then, you know, I just had never done it before. And so the closer it came to doing it, I got, the, the more nervous I got. And so how many of you, when God's called you to do something, and you're all excited about it until it gets closer to do it. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do it. Hey, can you give me a sign that this is really you? And you start backpedaling because you don't, you're thinking, you know what? I, I'm too nervous. Maybe this wasn't God. Maybe I'm going to step out in this and it's not going to be God. And I'm going to fall flat on my face. I remember when he first called me to speak, I was just like, oh my gosh. When I was in um, uh, middle school, I was in drama. And I, you know, most of you know my story from my past and I'm very outgoing now, but back then I was kind of a little, I was shy. I was outgoing more in a group, but in front of a bunch of people, I was extremely shy. But if I was with my own little group, I was pretty outgoing. And so I was in this drama class and you had to draw a box and then you had to pretend to get out of it, like open the door. It was a simple assignment. All of us had to do it. One at a time, we'd go up. Now, if I was in a group, I would have had no problem, but because I had 30 other students watching me, I had to draw my box in the air, just pretend like you're in a box, and then open the door and step out. No problem right now for me to do it. <laughs> but back there in middle school, all the students, all I could do is draw the box, y'all. I could, I was so scared, shaking in my boots, <laughs> that I could not open the door and step out of the box. She literally had to say, okay, Michelle, you can go sit down. Um, because I couldn't do it, I froze. And so that's how many of you are when God calls you to do something. You're kind of excited. I mean, I love drama class when I could be in the little group and do our drama skits. But when I had to get in front of everybody, it was a whole different story. And so some of you, when God's calling you, you're like, you're all excited about it when he's calling you to do it. But the moment it comes time for you to actually step out and do it, you get very nervous. And, it, and you start doubting that it was God. And it's okay. Like I said, uh, God expects us to doubt. And he doesn't want us to fake it. There was the Bible's full of doubters and Gideon being one of them. So we're in Judges and Gideon is one in two signs from God that he's calling him. And like I said, he didn't have any uh, military training to speak of. He, he knew God, like I said, he knew God had called him, but now is the time he actually has to act on it. And so he was fine with it, but now he's got to act on this calling. Gideon needed, Gideon needed re reassurance before he took one more step into the plan of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I know sometimes when God's called me to do something, I'm going, okay, God, uh, I just need confirmation. And I'm going to share a story with you in a minute how I, I did that. And I don't think God, there's no, there's never, you can ask my husband, there's never been a time that I've ever gone to God and said, I am unsure or God, I need you to um, confirm this in me or confirm this with somebody that God didn't just show up. Like within 24 hours, confirm what he's asking me to do. So this is Gideon. He, if he has a fault any, it was his weak faith that he needed to be strengthened. Don't downplay doubt. 
in your doubting what God has called you to do, if you're doubting what God's called you to do, ask him for confirmation. God judges the heart of man. Listen, he judges the heart of man. He knows if you're just, if you're asked, oh, I just want confirmation. He knows if you're just asking for confirmation because you want out of it and you don't believe God's really going to show up and give you confirmation or because God says, you know what? You don't judge a man. I'll judge him because I know his heart. Or if you're asking for confirmation because your heart really wants to do what God's calling you to do, but you don't want to step out and do something that's not God. You don't want to be wasting your time. You don't want to be doing something and going in a direction that he hasn't asked you or led you to go in. Amen. And so that's the thing. He knows your heart and he knew the heart of Gideon. He wanted to make sure this was God. And so he asked him for two signs. And I believe God would rather confirm with clarity than for you to miss it all together. Amen. But let me make myself clear. We do not want to run around always needing another sign to confirm what God's word has already confirmed. Now there's the other side of the camp where people are asking, a hunt, they just need a hundred confirmations. They'll like go to God and God will give them a confirmation. And listen, that's, that's where I'm at. That's where I've been. If I ask God for a sign that he's asking me to do something, he gives it to me. I'm not going to go to anybody else and ask them. I'm not because why would I? God himself told me, Yes, or sent me confirmation. Yes, Michelle, this is what I'm asking you to do. Go do it. Go, go tell, <laughs> go tell. Go tell you bunch of worshipers and doubters, go on and tell. Go tell the world. And he sent them off. He knew they were doubting. The word of God said they were doubting in Matthew. And he said, go tell. Go tell the world the good news. So even though they were doubting, he, did, he didn't address that. He said, yeah, you're doubting, but go anyway. And so... You don't want to ask, a, you know, let's be real, like five or six, seven people after God himself already confirmed it with you. Just go and do it. Because let me tell you what happened. Sometimes you'll go to five or six people and three of them will say, yeah, that was God. And the other three will go, ah, I don't know if that was God. Because they're looking at a human ability in you and not the God ability in you. They're judging you about what they know about you instead of what God knows about you. They're judging what they could see come out of you than, uh, than what God knows is in you. Remember, Eve was in Adam all along, but he didn't know it until God pulled her out by his, from a rib from him. So listen, some of you need to hear that again. Eve was in Adam all along, but he didn't know it until God pulled the rib from him and made Eve. And so when you ask so many people, oh, do you think God said this? Do you think God wants me to do this or that? Like I said, if you ask six people, three are probably going to say, yeah, God called you to do that. The other three are going to say, I don't know. I don't know because they are, they are looking at you from your past and present. But God looks at you from your past, present, and future. He, he already knows what he's going to do. He already knows what he's going to extract, what, all, what he's going to pull out of you. And some people can't see that, but that's in you. But God always has seen it because he placed it there. Amen? So that's the problem with that. I don't, I don't say you can't ask a few people here and there, but when you get a confirmation from God himself, why would you go ask anybody else? That's all I'm saying. Why would you? And so, uh, like I said, I believe God would rather confirm with clarity that for you to, than for you to miss it all together, y'all. Uh, and I don't think that you need to run around asking 100 people for signs, you know. There has never been a time that I, that I went to God and asked him for a sign that he didn't give me one almost immediately. So it's okay that we doubt sometime. It's, it's, it's okay. God expects it. He's going to send us anyway. He doesn't mind. The thing that, that would, that if it ever hindered you, if your doubt ever hindered you from being obedient, then that would be a problem. But there are so many times, y'all, that God has asked me to do something. He's asked me to do some pretty, um, I feel like they're kind of outrageous things. And when he'd asked me to do them, like, I don't know, this has been probably 10 years ago, maybe less, that he asked me to put um, prayers in envelopes, scriptures with prayers and envelopes with money. And, and just would, he said, just make up these and put them in your vehicle and I'll, I'll tell you where to go and who to send it to. And I could literally be driving to the grocery store and, and the Lord would say, stop here and give somebody this or stop there and go into this building or go there and give it to them. And, and I would be obedient. And I'll tell you, it gets easier after a while from being obedient to God because you get to see the fruit of it. You get to see the fruit of your obedience, you know? And so that makes it easier when he tells you after you've done it so much and for so long, you know God's in it. 
You don't need to ask. I mean, you don't need to ask so many people because you, you've been hearing his voice. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they obey. They follow. And once you've, once you've been obedient and following for so long, it gets easier and easier, one, to hear his voice, but it gets easier to also obey his voice. And it's not so scary and you don't have to throw a fleece out twice. You don't have to ask for confirmation twice. You, don't, you know, sometimes when it gets outrageous, when he's asking me some do some outrageous things, yeah, it even floors me, even to this day, when I've been obedient so many times to him. Now listen, that sounds like I'm tooting my own horn, but listen, there's been so many times that I wasn't obedient too, okay, y'all? So, <laughs> you know, like kind of like, uh, what is it, Instagram, that you only, put, you only put snapshots of the best things in your life, not the worst. So there's been times that I wasn't obedient to God and that I miss God, you know, and, and it's okay because if you're learning from your mistakes like that, like you miss him and you clearly missed him and you knew it. And then you look at that and you think, man, I could have been a blessing in that person's life. I could have spoke a blessing into that person's life. I could have went up and gave that woman a hug or that man a hug or shook his hand and, and gave that scripture that was rattling in my mind and go repeating over and over. When I looked at them, I could see that scripture and hear that scripture in my mind, but I didn't go deliver it to them. I could have been an, a, a, given a vertical hope and been an encourager. Instead, I was too busy thinking about going to get my seat or going here or doing that. Like if you're somebody, I'm talking about church, if you were, you know, somebody told you the Lord, the scripture was running through your head and this just happened to me. That's why it's fresh that I missed him. And so I miss God sometimes. I knew I was supposed to go do something and I didn't do it. And so I've missed him so many times, but the times that I haven't missed him has been a blessing and a faith builder in my life. And that uh, <laughs> I so enjoy the times that I don't miss him. And so this is where we're at. We're at where Gideon, you know, and he's a, he's a mighty man of God. He's a mighty, he's, the Lord says, you know what? He is a valor. He's a mighty man of valor. And God loves Gideon. But Gideon too is asking God, are you sure if this is really you, let me do the fleece. If it's wet one day, then I'll go back in the morning. If it's wet, then this is you. And then he's like, no, 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 wait a minute. I'm going to throw it back out there. And if it's dry, then it's you. Gideon is just wanting confirmation, not because he didn't want to do what God called him to do, but he wanted to be sure he was taking the step in the right direction. And there is a difference, y'all. There's a difference in there. So I'll tell you a story. Um, actually, yeah, I've got two stories. We'll see if we have time, but I'll tell you this story. This book here, Choices Are For The Living. By this point, I think this is my third or fourth book. Um, and many of you know the story of me writing Ripen on the Vine. Many of you know that I did not I did not have a high school diploma at the time that I was asked. I was grown, married, had some had two girls. Uh, I was gonna say have some kids, but I just, I just had two girls. Um, and I eventually got my high school diploma. But at the time I believe that the Lord asked me to write my first book, Ripen on the Vine. I did not. And so and I, I did not um, English was my worst subject. I mean, there's just so many reasons why I shouldn't have wrote that book if I was going to give a fleshly excuse not to. But I went on to write that book. God blessed it. It's just doing great now. It has a movie contract on it. God has blessed it. It's in prisons and women's shelters and churches. It's all over the world. It's just amazing. But when he told me to write, I think this is my third, maybe fourth book. I think it might have been my fourth book. Choices are for the living. I, by then, I had written enough books that I know what that entailed. I knew that I would be sitting somewhere at my desk or at the table or at the, you know, Allen somewhere, wherever I was chose to write at. And I knew I'd be writing for eight hours at least a day because when God tells me to write a book, that's what I do. I get, I write. That's my job. I, I don't try to make time for it. I, I just have time for it. I just, well, I guess I do make time for it. I just get in my schedule and I'm like, this is what I'm going to do until this book is finished. I'm going to write. And so I knew, and I thought, and I knew how much time it took. I knew how much dedication it took. I knew how much discipline it was gonna to take to write a book, to turn off all electronics, turn off everything for this period of time, every single day, Monday through Friday, and write. And so I, God says, I want you to write another book called Choices for the Living. And I was like, you know what, God? If, if you want me to write this book, then uh, I need you to, because I want to, but I want to make sure this is you because I know what it all entails. And so I said, I want you to send me, <laughs> send me an editor, but also I want you to, to confirm this 
from somebody that doesn't even know that you told me to write a book, which would have been everybody <laughs> because I didn't tell anybody at first. And so I, we went to church the following Sunday and um, Jenny, she, uh, she turned around and she said, yeah, if, if God's told you to write a book and he also told me if you do, I'll edit it. And so listen, y'all, there you have it. I mean, that was, I don't know, I don't know, I can't remember if he told me to write a book on a Saturday and that was a Sunday, but I know it wasn't too long after he told me to write this book, uh, Choices Are For The Living, that I already had a woman confirm it, say, hey, well, I'm just passed her down the hall. And she turned, she tapped me on the shoulder and I turned around and she goes, hey, if, if God tells you to write another book, um, I'm to edit, I'm, I'm supposed to edit it for you. So if that's not a word from God, I don't know what it is. So I ended up writing this book. It's a great teaching book. She did, I believe she did some editing on it for me. It's a fantastic book, but I was, I was doubting, but my heart was doubting because I didn't want to spend eight hours for the next, you know, six months writing a book that God never wanted me to write. And matter of fact, in the middle of this book, I stopped writing because I was like, Lord, I don't know what the next chapter is. And if you don't tell me, I'm not going to write it because I don't, I refuse just to write a book, just, just to write it. It, I want to write it because it's going to help your people and it's going to impart and, and plant hope into others. And so if you don't tell me the next chapter, then we'll just sit here because I, I don't, I'm just not going to write to write. And so he was so faithful to continue to write the chapters for me and with me. And so, but I, but I was doubting at first and that was my fleece that I threw out. That was what I sent uh, out on the lawn to say, hey, if, uh, <laughs> if you want me to do it, send somebody to um, confirm this. I do remember another time, and I've done this quite often. Like I said, there's not, there's not even one time that I can think of that I even know about. There's not one time that I haven't asked for confirmation on something that God didn't give it to me. I remember praying over this movie and I, I got to a point because everything was at a standstill. And I was like, you know what, Lord? I need confirmation. Do you still want the movie to be made out of Ripen on the Vine? Do you still want this to move forward? And I hadn't checked Capstone Legacy, our, uh, fun, our fundraiser, they're handling any kind of money and the, the funding for the film and it for donations. And I hadn't checked it in several months, I mean, several i think this was in february or early march that i had went to god and said i just need confirmation because i certainly don't want to be getting a team together and wasting everybody's time if this is not something in a direction you still want to go in and so first after i prayed that i was prompted to go check the capstone legacy and when i did there was a donation in december i think this was the end of the february or march that i had prayed this to god he had already <laughs> he had already planted the seed that he knew i would be asking for he already planted, I think it was $1,000. He had already planted the answer to my prayer before I'd ever prayed it, y'all. But he knew that I would become discouraged and, and downhearted about it. And he knew the day, he knew I was going to ask for that. He knew I was going to ask him for confirmation. And he already planted that answer to my prayer, you know, three months before I ever prayed it, before I ever went to him. And that should be encouraging to someone out there listening today that you have prayed something. You know what, your answer may be already there. You're just not looking in the right direction because I hadn't been on Capstone Legacy's foundation in months to look for anything. And normally I get a, I notice that somebody had um, given to the movie, but because it was December and January and just a busy time during the holidays, I didn't even go over there to look. But God knew and he saved that for me and he planted that answer to my prayer. So that should be an encouragement to some of you out there that has prayed something and you haven't heard and you feel like he has an answer. Well, maybe you're looking for the answer in the wrong place. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So here, I'm going to end with this story. Uh, is a lady named Tammy Miller. Um, God used her dramatically in my life. I remember sitting at my computer several, several years ago and I was just... I was just needing an answer. I just needed some confirmation from God that I was that He was going to continue to use this ministry because I it ebb and flows, man. <laughs> this ministry has ebbed and flowed, and so I would like one year I, I think I spoke 27 times because I was in the prison once a month and we were holding Friday night with faith builders and I was holding conferences. Um, I think faith builders did three or four conferences one year. It was just it was just 
powerful and we were on fire and there was so just go 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 and then the next year i might be asked to speak twice in a whole year and so it was during those times that you go hey <laughs> i wonder if i'm supposed to still be doing what you said you wanted me to do and it's in those quiet times sometimes that we start doubting god because it's quiet and again god's not hating on you if you doubt okay <laughs> the bible is full of doubters but you know again back in matthew 28 he said you know what i hear some of you are doubting you're worshiping some of you are not doubting but some of you are worshiping and you're doubting but he said still go you go ahead and go doubters go and tell the world the good news go and tell the world so it's okay he's still going to send you it's okay if you doubt so i'm 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 on my treadmill and I'm furious. <laughs> I'm not only doubting, but I'm getting mad at God. Anybody been there? Anybody ever been mad at God? All right, so listen, I'm mad at God and I'm just sitting there and I'm sweating and I'm running on my treadmill and I am just, I'm just furious. I'm just like, I don't understand how we can go from all that to just this, like nothing, pretty much. I said, you, and I was on my treadmill. I go, God, you just called me to a ministry of nothing. <laughs> I said, it is. Why do you call it faith builders? It's just, it's just a ministry of nothing. And y'all, I tell you what, I tell you what, sometimes I pull off my glasses, I almost yank out my nose ring. <laughs> so I tell you what, I, I'm furious. And I said, I just need a sign. I need a sign that you called me to do this and that you want me to continue in this ministry. And, you know, I'll give it my 100%, but I just need to know that you want what you're calling me to do. You still want me to do it. Otherwise, just. Leave me somewhere else. This is, I've told him so many times, if you don't want me doing this, just tell me to do something else. I'll be happy to do it. I just don't want to waste my life doing something you ain't called me to do. And so I'm on the treadmill and I go, I just need you to send somebody. I need somebody to tell me. I just need a word from somebody. <laughs> so I got off that treadmill, went to sleep that night, got up, got on my computer the next day, and I hear uh, there's a message on my computer and messaging. And it's from Tammy, Tammy Miller. And she says, you know what? God gave me a dream. And I want to share it with you. And she goes on to share this whole dream. And it's in my glove apartment in my truck. And the whole dream I wrote down um, as she shared it with me. I just copied it. Because she said, the dream was, she goes, but I was awake, but I was dreaming. But you were in it. And God was, Jesus was looking at you. And he was laughing. And he was, he was just happy and ecstatic with what you're doing. So proud of you. And he just wants you to keep going. And she just shared this whole dream with me about which she said she was awake, but she was dreaming. So a vision with me about how Jesus was so thrilled and laughing and full of joy and he just wanted me to keep going. And so that was good enough, y'all. I'm crying and I'm telling her, you don't understand. I was just on my treadmill praying, God, give me a sign. I want a sign. I said, I was actually mad. And I said, I just need somebody to tell me that I'm doing what, they, what you want me to be doing to keep going because I can go. I just need a little bit of encouragement. I can go another 10 years on a little bit of encouragement. And so she said, well, the crazy thing about it is, Michelle, is I haven't been able to, no connection. I have no Wi-Fi service at my house. I have to usually go somewhere and get it because she didn't have it. It wasn't very far after that that God opened doors that no man could shut. I host two radio shows now and this Vertical Hope show and has been guest on many other TV shows. So God's good. Don't you give up. Amen. I just thank you for tuning in to your Vertical Hope for the day.